Good morning, welcome back to Southwest Victory Gardens. My name is Brandon, and on this channel, we talk all about backyard gardening and desert climates. So I wanna welcome you back to this channel, and thank you for tuning in to this video. Um, it's almost uh, the end of winter here in Tucson. Uh, spring is upon us, and with that in mind, we wanted to do uh, another series of videos that are gonna help out backyard gardeners in dry climates. Uh, by really focusing uh, on really the most important aspect of backyard gardening uh, here in Tucson and in other dry places like Phoenix or Yuma, and that is water conservation. So what I wanna do is a series of videos that focus on some of the low water use techniques that we can use here in our desert gardens. Uh, I'm gonna focus uh, heavily on drip irrigation because that's really one of the most flexible and most efficient ways to water um, our vegetable gardens and our fruit trees. Um, and because you know we live in a dry climate, we really have a lot of access to uh, drip irrigation parts and we have drip irrigation stores you know that that can help us you know really uh, install a system um, as, as complex or as simple as we need. And so what I hope to do with this series of videos is help walk you all through some of the basics of drip irrigation starting you know initially with the components of the system and then walk you through some of the basic you know designs uh, that you might encounter in your landscape or in your vegetable garden, right? So let's start by going through some of the basic components of our irrigation system and then in subsequent videos we'll show you how you can put those components together and how you can design your irrigation system to best water your landscape or your vegetable garden. All right, so let's take a look at these components and see what we are working with and you know what options you might have when it comes to watering your garden. All right, so if you're thinking about installing a basic drip irrigation system or you're interested in learning more about your system, I'm gonna walk you through some of the basic components that each system has or should have. Uh, that way you can just familiarize yourself a little bit with the drip irrigation components and you can decide you know, what you wanna do based on your particular situation. So if you're just watering you know, one vegetable garden bed and you're not watering other plants you know, on, on, on the same line, you, know, you can do something really simple. Um, or if you have you know, a, a large landscape and you're watering trees and shrubs and cactus, you, know, you can do something a little bit different. So the components of the drip irrigation system basically start with the timer, all right? So we have different types of timers or irrigation controllers that basically tell your system when to turn on, how long to turn on for, and how often to turn on. All right, so this is like the brains of your system. So you can have something as very simple like one of these uh, orbit, you know, like egg timers that, you know, basically you turn the dial and it runs for how long you turn it for and then that's it. Uh, or you can have something a little bit more advanced where you can actually program it to run on, on, a, on a schedule uh, and, and, you know, you can program it to run multiple times a day, uh, you know, different things like that. So here's an older version of this kind of uh, hose timer, right? So these three timers all can work on a hose bib. They have the plumbing parts built in. And so if you don't want to do any underground plumbing and you're not familiar with that kind of stuff, you can set up a really simple basic irrigation system using these types of uh, timers here or these types of controllers. Okay, now moving on, you might have a little bit more of a larger landscape and you want to water multiple, um, multiple trees, multiple shrubs, you know, all different kinds of plants like cactus and vegetables. Well, these timers are going to give you some more flexibility in that regard. These timers connect to underground valves, which we'll talk about in another video, um, through underground electrical wiring, right? So there's no plumbing necessarily hooked up to these timers. Instead, they hook up to underground valves that have wires attached to them. So these timers essentially turn this valve on and off, on and off through this through these wires here. So you can locate these timers basically anywhere on your property. They can attach to your house or even in your garage, right? And you can control your irrigation system that way. Whereas these timers have to be connected to their plumbing source or their water source. All right, you see the difference? Okay, but regardless, all of these timers tell your system how long to run, how often to run, 
and what time to turn on. All right, so the controller, that's the first part of your system. So here's a few options there. All right, second part of your system. Some might say this is optional, but I would strongly recommend you install some kind of vacuum uh, breaker or um, you know vacuum valve or backflow preventer um, what this does is this basically prevents any uh, any debris that might get into your tubing um, from going back into your plumbing right and so especially if you have um, parts of your landscape that you're watering that are at high elevation or higher elevation than your valves then you want to make sure you have some type of backflow preventer so this type of backflow preventer you know attaches to the hose bib like that and you always want to attach it on this side of your timer so that it's not under constant water pressure if you have it up here where it's under constant water pressure that's not gonna uh, it's 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 gonna fail on you so you want to have it on this side these are more complex you know they hook up to the uh, 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 the, the plumbing and everything prior to entering your irrigation box and so we'll cover that in another video all right so third component and a very important part of your irrigation system is some type of filter right so we have the classic y filters that you see here which have you know a basic you know cylinder filter inside of them something like this you can see how dirty this one is uh, and we also have some sort of like straight in line filters uh, that hook up really well to our hose bib timers like that. All right. So these filters are very important because uh, especially with things like hard water and calcium, that's going to prevent, you know, your uh, your emitters from clogging over time by getting you know calcified and things like that so it's really important that you have some kind of filter uh, in, in line in your system all right so something like that now what makes a drip irrigation system function is what is called the pressure regulator so these are pressure regulators and they take city water pressure which can be very high you know and convert it into a 20 psi 30 psi or 40 psi water pressure and so there's these different types you see here and all of them essentially do the same thing they take city water pressure and they convert it to a very uh, low water pressure so that we don't uh, bust our tubing when we start to run water through our system so if you notice all of these components have arrows on them that tells you the direction of the water flow so you can see flow right so you can always know how we're hooking up our components because we just follow that arrow and that's going to tell us in what order we can do it. All right, so to reiterate, we have a controller of some kind. This is going to be the brains of our system. Okay, we have a backflow preventer and a filter. These are essentially going to keep our system maintained. They're going to keep debris from clogging our emitters and clogging our plumbing. So these are super important. And then we want to have our pressure regulator. And once we have all of these components, we can join them all together. And I'll show you how to do that in a different video. And then we're going to connect that to our irrigation tubing. And I'll show you how to do that as well. All right. So I just wanted to cover in this video the primary components of the system that we're going to be working with. And then now we can get into some of the you know more detailed stuff about how these components join together, how we can program the timers, how we can modify it, and how we can do all these sorts of flexible things you know with the drip irrigation. So that's going to do it for this video. I put a resource guide in the description down below to where you can find these components here locally in Tucson. And if you have any questions on these components that you see today or anything else on drip irrigation, uh, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as best as I can. All right, y'all. Take care. We'll see you next time.